Okay. So this, what we're looking at right here, this is uh, Eco Woodworks' contribution to the uh, South Sound Green Tour. And what we have here is a pair of repla replacement, uh, retrofit, recreated uh, casement windows. Um, and this, what we're looking at right here is clear vertical grain fir, so that is, that is what you would find in the originals, the, the old growth fir. And then what we've got here is double pane insulated glass. Um, the muntins up above, these are not true divided light. Um, this is actually just another pane. The muntins are adhesive on the top. Um, so you get both the, uh, the historic preservation value, but also the, uh, the energy efficiency that you would want these days from these types of windows. These are all weather sealed. We've got weather seal around the inside here as well. And then over here, we've got what uh, we like to affectionately refer to as the pickle door. Uh, this door is made uh, from reclaimed redwood from pickle vats from the Nally Pickle Factory in the Nally Valley up in Tacoma. Um, as we can see here, we've got the architecturally correct dental molding um, that originally went with the house. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, uh, because the house has been altered beyond, I guess you could say, repair <laughs> of the uh, the historic uh, the historic integrity is is somewhat compromised. This was not an actual room, but this was a covered porch that was then filled in. Um, we've also got some nice uh, art glass up here to sort of spruce things up a bit. And then I believe that the threshold, I believe, is reclaimed hemlock. Um, not 100% certain on that, but I do believe that is, that is the material that was used. This, is, of course, is all weather sealed as well. Um, that will keep uh, air flows out and retain your energy efficiency that way as well. Any questions? And so by replicating the original windows, they were able to work within the system for the house. Correct. Um, you know, in the sense that the windows that were there were replaced with aluminum, but the house was meant to function with this, you know, the size of window, the type of window has been recreated. Right. Not 100% purely, but, but pretty close. Yeah, and this is, this is typical of what you would find on, on a house this size and style back in 1928, was it? I think it was kind of... Yeah. Why did you go with a casement versus the... Double um, partially, I think it may have been due to time constraints as well as cost constraints. It's it's cheaper and easier to fabricate a casement window. We were fabricating the door at the same time, so we had the shop tied up. So we wanted to make sure that we were architecturally correct, and we wanted to provide um, an energy efficient product. Um, but at the same time, we also wanted to maintain some sort of simplicity for our crew, just so we could make sure to get everything done on time. So. Um, that may have been why we chose to go with that. I'm I'm not exactly sure, other than that, as that to why. That, that I believe that's I believe that's the reason Which we is, decided to go for with a that. a lot of property owners, that there are really constraints in terms of money. Um, oh, absolutely. So, well, I was thinking you were talking about the house as a system, and I've seen. I mean, I've lived in houses or you know older houses that have double hung windows. Mm -hmm. and, and the actual value of having both the top and bottom open is right. leaps and bounds above just one, you know, the bottom opening. Well, we Absolutely. Can, we can look at that here, right. too. Um, so depending on what's the resources of the property owner, um, you can do as little or as much right. to replicate and protect. That's why we always try to help people restore what they have because it is so expensive to replace it's true. Yeah, and we'll in an accurate way. We can sort of just go, like, I've got sort of a three-point presentation on this. The first being, obviously, the storm window. This is, like you just mentioned, if this were just to be single-pane glass, just adding the storm window, you'd be able to, to retain that, that R value. Um, so this is the first prescriptive measure we would, uh, we would suggest to a homeowner that was looking to increase energy efficiency but had original wood windows. The first thing we would recommend would be the storm window because it is the most cost-effective for the homeowner and also just um, easiest to maintain in terms of you know, on off during the summer and winter. These can also be exchanged out for screens too, which we do have our clients ask oh, for. Yeah, this right here, which you'll see down here is there's weather seal all the way around all the edges, right here. So you create that uh, that seal right there. And then if that weren't enough, <clears throat> back here, uh, part two is the bottom pane right here this one pane. You can see here, this is insulated glass. The sash has been routed. Glass has been retrofit and stopped back in. So we've got double pane insulated glass here. And then the third part is, of course, we've got your weather seal down here on the sash. 
We've also got weather seal on the jam liners here and here. And then there's another strip up here to create more seal there. And Mark, this is a salvage window, correct? <clears throat> yes, that's absolutely correct. This is a salvage window from one of our former clients. So that's probably a hundred year old window. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. It has been reglazed. Uh, we've done some glazing work up on the lights here, but these are single pane lights up on the top. And then we're also able to add traditional sash hardware. This is all recreation hardware, but it's all historically accurate and um, what you would find on an original double pane window. And so with just these few adjustments, you can dramatically raise the energy efficiency of your, uh, your double hung wood window. And so, yeah, so during the, the summertime, it's good to have these, these locking elbow kickouts. That you, can, you can still keep the storm window on. You don't necessarily have to take them off. Um, and then just at night, you can just, you know, close them back up. And there are tax assistance uh, programs available for homeowners to restore their original features. So there's some help out there. Right. Now we should be clear though that these aren't tax incentives from Puget Sound Energy. Correct. These are tax incentives from the City of Olympia for and the for historic the preservation. Um, <clears throat> I was going to mention earlier we talked about you know the the studies that you would mentioned and some of the value of these uh, of storm windows and adding storm windows and what kind of tax credits would possibly be available. Um, unfortunately, after uh, several hours of of research and speaking with a, a few actual labs, uh, there's a testing lab that is uh, authorized by the National, I want to say it's the National Fenestration Council or Commission. Um, I spoke with a lab tech who does testing on windows and he informed me that currently at this time there are no uniform standards in the United States for uh, storm window testing and therefore storm windows unfortunately are not actually eligible for tax credits. So generally what I tell our client base is that if you're looking for a one-time quick bang for your buck, couple hundred bucks, thousand bucks, whatever, um, for, you know, for your energy improvements, that's not where you're going to get your money saved. Where you're going to get your money saved is the actual energy efficiency and your heating bills that you're going to save money. Um, also, you will not devalue your house should you have a historic home like this and then decide, hey, let's put in some vinyl windows because um, you've just reduce the price of your house, or the value, I should say. Um, so unfortunately, you know, we're working, we're working to see if we can get something moving on that. Um, there was a, uh, a conference this last March in Las Vegas where they had met, the National Fenestration Council had met on that, um, and I have yet to hear the results of that. I know the National Trust for Historic Preservation is looking into that too, to get that same recognition right. that the vinyl industries received. Yeah, the uh, national tax credits for, and that, that led to a lot of the replacement windows being put in, they actually, it was based on U-value the window, and as long as you could find a storm window that actually met a U-value, you would get the same, you know, up to $1,500. That's, that's the theory, but there's no uniform testing standards for storm windows. So PSE doesn't recognize They don't recognize it. Yeah, and a lot of those tax credits were actually pushed through by the vinyl window industry lobby. So, again, gearing away from, you know, retrofit and more into just more consumption. So that's, that's sort of the, um, the, the history behind how these tax credits came about um, and why they're so geared toward those vinyl replacement windows. Um, I recently heard a story about, I think it was Penguin Windows, is actually forced to back off some of their claims regarding R-value um, because the testing itself was not accurate, it was not an accurate test environment to the field environment. So th what they were claiming was not actually the way the windows were performing because they were, the environment that the window is then placed into has a direct effect on how much, how much uh, R value you're going to get from a window. Um, so Penguin has actually recently had to back off some of their energy efficiency claims um, because they simply don't hold up in our climate and our environment. Yeah, go figure. Any questions about the, <laughs> the windows or the Heritage Commission um, is, you know, out there all the time trying to talk to people about that they don't have to replace their windows, so it's great to have two informed people here yeah. <laughs> also share some information.